Hello, boys and girls. This is Holland Chambers Biology bringing to you lecture part two from our multiple alleles and epistasis lecture. So let's go ahead and continue with our blood type. All right, so again, feel free to stop this video at any time, write this down, because you will be responsible to not only know this, but um, you need to be able to turn in these lecture notes with your own handwriting. So make sure to stop it, write this down. Now, as a reminder, blood, we have four different phenotypes, so A, B, A, B, and O. But genetically, keep in mind, if you have A blood, genetically you can be either AA or AO, okay? Again, O is recessive, which is why both A and B have, a, have an O option, okay? A blood and B blood are both dominant, but a B blood is considered co-dominant because you have both A and B blood. O blood is pure recessive, which means it can only mix with itself. You cannot get A or B or AB um, as blood donors to an O blood person. So they can only take O blood. So let's go to look at a little practice problem here. So if you have a parent that's B blood, you don't know if he's BB or BO, you just know he's B blood, and you have a parent that's AB. I want to know if it's genetically possible to actually have an O blood baby from this combination. So this is what you guys would do. You would include the blank, okay? So remember, from our key up here at the top, to be B blood, we have two options. We can either be BB or BO. So let's do the first one, BB and then fill in the second one, BO. So those are only two options. So again, drop it down, bring it over. Now with blood, A always goes first. So bring in the A first and then the B. A, B, drop it down, bring it over. So all of these combinations here, if dad was B, 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 B none of the children would be A blood. So 0% O blood. Sorry, none of the children would be O blood. Okay, so and if I would ask you, well, what could the options be? Then you would say, well, if the dad was BB, then we have 50% of the children would be AB, and then 50% would be BB, okay? Now, what happens if dad over here was BO? Do we have a chance to create an O child? So again, bring in the A, so A always goes first, and then B, drop down the B, bring over the B, bring over the AO, so O always goes second because it's recessive, and then bring over the B and then the O. So in this particular case, again, you have 0% chance of an O blood baby. But our choices now have shifted. We actually have one or 25% chance of having an AB child. You also have a 25% chance of having an A child, but you actually have a 50% chance of having a B child. So phenotypically, Okay, so remember, phenotypically, so phenotype, to be B blood is either BB or BO. So B blood, we actually have a 50% chance, okay? A blood, we have a 25% chance, because it's AO. And then AB blood, you would actually have another 25% chance. So you can either write this as a percentage, or you could say two to one to one and that would be um, fine as well, okay? So now let's spice this up. This is still considered multiple alleles because we have multiple letters for one trait, which is blood. Now let's go and look at something different where we have multiple alleles, but our one trait is now rabbit fur, okay? So rabbit fur um, is a little bit different from Blood. Blood is dominant, dominant, co-dominant, recessive. But rabbit fur, even though it's multiple alleles, it actually has what we call a hierarchy of dominance. Okay, so again, hierarchy of dominance. Now, if you inherit a big C, that means that your rabbit is going to be full color. So completely filled in, dark, dark brown. Okay, if we inherit a little C with now an exponent right over here of a CH, that means that your rabbit is like kind of like a gray color. It's known as chinchilla, all right? If we inherit a little c with an exponent of h, that means that my little rabbit is Himalayan, which is actually black and white. 
Or if I just inherit a little c with no exponent, then my rabbit can have a chance of becoming albino, okay? Now here's the deal. Do not write these combinations, okay? So your gene combinations, your alleles, do not write them as all one solid, okay? If you notice, there is an exponent, okay? So you need to include the exponent. So you need to write it like this, big C, little c, exponent, or little c, exponent, little c, not c, c, h, c, okay? So make sure you guys kind of note that. We do need to clearly see the exponents. All right, so let's do an example of this type of multiple allele combination using a hierarchy of dominance. Okay, so here's our parent one, so big C and little c h. Here's our parent two with a little c c h and a little c. Now, if it helps you, put a box around each parent and then slice them in half so you can clearly see the second allele combination. So if this is c c h, my second allele combination is the little c, all right? Now you guys can split these apart. So just like normal, A and B, right? So big C, C, H. So remember, law of segregation, separate these out. And then this parent will put over here, the first little combination is little C, C, H, and then little C. Now some of you guys are asking, why is she putting a line? Well, the line represents a little C, because if you notice, I drew this C, and that C, kind of the same size, all right? So if you guys are not clearly distinguishing a capital letter versus a lowercase letter, you're gonna completely mess up this entire data. So either put a line or a dot or something to clearly state that this is a lowercase letter versus an uppercase letter. Okay, so just like your normal monohybrids, we're gonna drop it down, bring it over. But when we do this, please remember to always write the big capital letter first. So big capital C first, and then we have a little c, c, h. And I always like to put a circle inside my Punnett square of that second allele. So I can clearly see that that's c, h, not what's going on up over here, okay? So bring in my next one. So these are both little c, so it doesn't matter which order you put it in. So c, h, and then drop down this one, little c, H, and I'm going to put a circle around the second exponent, or the second allele, so I can see it, okay? Bring down the big C, little c, I'm going to put a circle, okay, little c, and then here's a C, H, put a circle around it so I can clearly see it, okay? So now let's go ahead and write out what we have here. So just like normal, we're going to start with the first box. So our genotype is big C, 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 H. How many do I have? I have one, okay? So at this point, cross it off, make your um, ratio. Now, I also want you guys at this point to go ahead and start looking back at the key and figure out, well, which one of these should I be writing first? So which one is more dominant than the next one? So here you have a C, H, and then an H. So if you go back up here, higher up is more dominant. So CH is higher than the H, so CH is most dominant, so he gets written first. So we're gonna write over here our genotype, the little c, CH, and then the CH, okay? And then how many of him do we have in our combination? We only have one, cross them off, okay? The next one we have is big C, little c. We only have one, cross it off. And then the next one, again, if you're not sure which one is higher up, Go ahead and look at our chart. The H is higher than the C, so the H goes first. So you're gonna write this one first, little c, H, and then little c. How many do you have? One. Okay, now at this point, we no longer need our monohybrid cross. All we're gonna use now is our genotype. So now that we have the dominant over recessive choices, this will make your life a lot easier when you're trying to figure out what do they look like. So let's start with the first one, big C. Okay, so how many big C's do we have? Well, here's a big C and there's a big C. And big C, according to our higher up, big C represents full color. So our phenotype is full color. Again, how many do I have? I have one here and one here, so that is two, okay? The next one I have is CH and H. So CH is higher up, so that's the color he's gonna be, which is H and Chilla, 
So you say chinchilla. How many do I have? I have one. This one doesn't have a CH, so I'm going to go ahead and just circle him so I know that he's done. One. Okay. And then the last one you have is the H is higher up than the C, so this rabbit is actually going to be Himalayan. Okay. And again, how many do I have? One. So that's how you guys would do a hierarchy of dominance if you had a multiple allele um, situation. Okay, so most importantly, whether it is blood or a rabbit fur, okay, regardless, if you have many options for one trait height, many options for one trait blood, make sure to write out a key, just like we have here. Also make sure to clearly um, separate out the allele so you can clearly see what it is that you are solving. And then also make sure to write it as who is dominant versus recessive in the genotype. So it makes your life a lot easier when you go to write out the phenotype. Okay? If you have any questions, make sure to ask in class. Otherwise, this is Holland Chambers checking out.